In this video, we're going to talk about data validation and how to use it to create a drop down list. First, let's talk about the basics of data validation. So, if you highlight a cell and if you click data, and to the right, you'll see data validation. Now, you can put some restrictions on what you can enter in a cell. For example, let's choose, let's say, a whole number. Now, we're going to choose a whole number between 1 and 10. Now, notice that we could enter any number between 1 and 10. However, if we try to enter a number outside of that, let's say 18, we're going to get an error. And we can control the error message that we get. So let's go back to data validation. and the error alert, let's say, select a number between 1 and 10. So let's say if we try 12. So now we get this error, select a number between 1 and 10. Now something else that we could do is we can put an input message when we highlight or select a cell. So I'm going to say choose, instead of select, choose a number between 1 and 10. Inclusive. So that's including 1 and 10. So anytime I select that cell, you can see it tells the user, hey, pick a number between 1 and 10. So now let's get rid of that. Now, something else that we could do is we can control the length of the text. So let's say we want it to be anywhere between 1 and 5 characters. So let's say if I type in the word text, that has 4 characters. That's OK. If I type in short, that's all right. If I type in, let's say, 11, that has 6 characters, that's not allowed. And of course, I have to change my error message because it's still saying the same thing. Now, let's talk about how we can use Excel to create a drop down list. So, first, let's write a few things. Let's say customer ID, full name, email, phone number. Whoops fix that and then address what else can we use let's say annual income age and finally occupancy so you can highlight any cell once again let's click data and then data validation this time we're going to choose lists and you can click this button, this arrow at the right, and then select everything that you want to appear in the drop down menu. After that, click enter and then OK. So notice this button appears at the bottom right of the cell. Once you click it, you can choose any one of these options. You can choose full name, address, age. So basically, you can select an entry for the cell in any of those options in that drop down list. So that's how you can create a drop down list using data validation. Now, once you select a different cell, that arrow disappears. And so it becomes difficult to tell that this is a drop down list compared to everything else that's here. So it's helpful to highlight that cell. You can click home and then you can click this button and basically put a background color to that cell to indicate that cell is special and it's a, a drop down list. Now if you need to remove that color just you can put white you can go back and just deselect it. But let's change it to blue. Now let's talk about how to remove the drop down list if we ever need to. So let's highlight the cell click data go back to data validation and this time, to 
to remove it, just select any value and the drop down option will disappear. So that's what you can do. Now let's go back and put it back on. So we're going to have to reselect the list. And so our options appear again. Now, if we delete this, that's going to be a problem. So let's put it back. Now, sometimes you may want to create a drop down list without having this information present on your Excel sheet. So what you could do is create a drop down list on a new sheet with this source data being present on this sheet. So let's add a new sheet and let's zoom in because right now this looks very small. And let's create a new drop down list. So let's go to data validation. Let's select lists, click that, and then go back to sheet two. In the older versions of Excel, you may have to um, name your source data. But for this one, you could just go back to a previous sheet, highlight it. This is Excel 2016, by the way. Click enter. OK. Now, if you go back to uh, sheet three, this is sheet two, but sheet three, you have the option of selecting anyone in this list or any one of these items in this list. So that's how you can uh, use one of the newer versions of Excel to create a drop down list in a new Excel sheet so that you don't have to look at the previous source data. You can put that in another separate sheet. Now let's talk about how we can use the drop down list in Excel but with the VLOOKUP function if we want to look up information. So let's go to sheet one and here we have uh, this information and what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in the full name. This is for the customer so we can search them by name. And we're going to look up information such as the customer's ID number, the customer's email address, phone number, annual income, and age. So let's start with, let's pick Sam Wilson. Let's look up his customer ID number with the VLOOKUP function. So let's type in equal VLOOKUP. And then after that, the lookup value will be his name, which is in cell C12. And then for the table array, we can select everything that we see here, comma. Now the column index number. So the customer ID is found in column B. So that's the second column starting from the left. So column two. And for the range lookup, we have two options, true or false. So I'm going to select false for this one. So we have to type in his exact name to retrieve the customer ID. Now let's repeat the process for the email. So let's type in equal VLOOKUP. And then we're going to choose C12 again. That's where his name is. We're going to select the same table array. Now, the email is in a new column, column C, which is column 3. I'm going to type in false again for an exact match. Now, for the phone number, I'm going to change it up a little. So the lookup value will still be his name found in cell C12. The table array will be the same. The column number is now column four for the phone number. And then this time I'm going to select true for an approximate match as opposed to an exact match. I'm going to do the same for the last two fields. So now the column index number for the annual income, column E, that's column five. Let's select true again. Now for column F for age, that's six.
Now, as you can see, we have everything corresponding to Sam Wilson. We have his customer ID number, which is 13485 and so forth. We have his email, sam.w at Outlook. We have his phone number, his annual income, and his age. Now, all we need to do is just change the name, and we can pull up someone else's data. So let's choose Rachel Garcia. And as you can see, it updates automatically. So we have everything that corresponds to Rachel, except something's off here. The phone number and the email and the age. So let's select false. It looks like the approximate match didn't work today. So let's choose the exact match option. So for Rachel, we have everything. We have the right full number this time, the income and her age. So let's change it to Susan Williams. And so you can see that we have her customer ID number, her email, susan.w at yahoo, her number 352-215-2784, and her income 74,000 and her age 43. So it's working at this point. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this into a drop-down list. So let's select data and then data validation. Let's choose lists from the drop-down menu and our source is going to be all the names in this column. So let's press enter and then okay. So now we have a drop-down list. So we don't have to type in the whole name. We can just select anyone in this list. So let's select Kim Campbell. And so we could see that we have her customer ID, her email, kim.c at hotmail.com. We have her number, 513, and her income, 63,000, and her age, 32. Let's select someone else. So let's choose Kenny Johnson. And so you can see it's automatically going to retrieve his information from the database. Now, this is going to be useful, let's say, if you have a thousand lines of information. You don't want to have to go through each one. So just by selecting a name in the list, or you could just type the name in. Let's say if you want to type in Greg Larson, it's automatically going to come up. And so that's how you can use the VLOOKUP function with the drop-down list feature in Excel. So that's all I got for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.